sir, but later on I moved to Recording it. started. The I chose and then, you know, like on W specifically, I would say that it's been more than three years since when I'm working on W uh, for, you know, UXC uh, reports or business. And since that, you know, I have been taking several sessions here. I have trained a couple of folks who are, you know, involved in Optum side of the business and, you know, uh, the UXC side of the business. So any time during the training, uh, I mean, you need help, you can just call me Sati and uh, you can ping me, uh, raise your uh, hand in WebEx using the icon uh, you'll be looking at, or you can, you know, chat uh, whatever question you have. So before we start, I think we can, you know, uh, just go for a round of introduction. So. I would just need, you know, the name of yours and uh, YW, why you are here in this training, any expectations out of this training. So I think we can start and it will give us, you know, a kind of uh, help to, you know, get to know each other and we will be, you know, during this training, uh, maybe some of us will be working on the W live and we can share the screen so that we can make this learning more interactive. Sounds good? Good. All right. Good. So, uh, all right. So in my WebEx list, I can see Carl Anderson on the top. So Carl, could, could you please start your name and by W? Sure. Um, as you said, my name is Carl Anderson, and um, I'm going to be working on uh, service experience um, <clears throat> reporting, and um, they are transitioning um, away from Platform, um, so onto Tableau, and I'll probably be using Tableau for some other reporting as well. So just need to uh, learn how to use it. All right. So are you using uh, Tableau already, or uh, you are the user? Uh, I'm an end user or the developer. Um, I'm not using Tableau now. I'm going to be helping the team. Um, I'll be creating um, the reports, um, and hopefully, <clears throat> at some point, they'll probably be taking some some training too when they get up to you know get uh, get it installed on their machines and whatnot. Um, they will be the end users, um, so I'll be more of the developer. Um, so, all right, great. Welcome to the session. Thank you, Carolyn. You're the next. Okay, um, I'm Carolyn Griffin. I work with uh, Quality Insight and Jack, um, and I was in a uh, Tableau training class um, probably two years ago, but then I never really got to use it. So this is going to be um, like a refresher for me um, to learn how to use it with Jack and Quality Insight because we are uh, transitioning off of Plat4 as well. All right. Welcome to the session. Thank, Thank you. you. Captain, you're the next. Uh, hi. Um, yeah, I'm Kathy Rule, and um, I work. I also work with Quality Insight and the Jack applications. And uh, I'm not sure how much use I'm going to get uh, of Tableau, but I will. I do need to become familiar with it since we'll be using that in our areas. Great. Hope we will meet your expectations <laughs> during this training. Hello, right. uh, Derek. Hello, um, I'm working on an at scale rollout project with Dinesh Smarnkar and Kevin Gordon and Rodney Bell and um, uh, Joe. I don't know if Joe's on here. Joe Wynn. I, I am um, here. <laughs> Good. Good to hear your voice. <laughs> well, uh, we're, we're studying how Tableau fits together with that scale, and um, we're going to be, in a sense, SMEs, uh, so that um, some new um, internal customers will learn that scale, and at the same time, they'll be learning Tableau, and we're hoping to sort of uh, assist them, you know, get them up to speed. Great. Uh, next, I can see Dinesh. I think, Dinesh, we uh, already talked in first session, right? Right, right. So, yeah, first session I attended, but I was not able to attend all sessions. Right. So, and so I'm hoping, uh, I'm part of, just for introduction on myself, so I'm part mm -hmm. of ARA data management team. 
and uh, I have a little bit of understanding on Tableau, but wanted to get more understanding so that we can help with uh, platform migration to Tableau. So that's really what we are looking for, and our team is here to uh, attend this session. So that's, thank you, that's it. All right, uh, Hong, Hong Lee. Hi, hi, um, my name is Hong Lee, so uh, I'm a developer. I think I will be using Tableau to develop some report, and uh, I'm report to Dinesh. So currently mm -hmm. we have a, like, a SQL out, so probably we will be using like Tableau to integrate with SQL and to doing some reporting. And I'm pretty new to Tableau, so I'm hoping to learn a lot from you. Thank you. All right, all right, welcome to the session. Joe. Yeah, hi, and I do, uh, yes, I work with, uh, uh, with for Dinesh, he's my supervisor, and I work with uh, Derek and with Rodney and with Kevin, and indeed, uh, we are part of the, we are rolling out at scale, and Tableau is going on top of that, that seems to be a primary reporting tool to be wedded to that, to at scale, and uh, although I had uh, been introduced to Tableau about four, I don't know how many years ago, that all that knowledge has been lost because I've never used it. So uh, basically this is a, a, a massive refresher course for me. All right. Uh, I can see next, Meshkarim. Uh, hi, and sorry about the background noise. Um, um, I am in a, a ARA um, uh, data management uh, team and our port finish and uh, I'm a developer so what I want to get out of this uh, uh, training is to learn how to do reports in dashboard so that mm -hmm. I can uh, help the uh, business team I think how to right. do reports in dashboard using uh, the Q mm -hmm. right. Nancy. Yes, hi, um, my name is Nancy Kramer. I too am in the quality um, insight to QI area as the um, business analyst for um, the QI reports. We currently use um, SSRS reports and are looking to also um, incorporate Tableau into our, um, our uh, report development tool set, and so I'm looking to make sure I have an understanding of Tableau and as far as testing and writing specifications, I will not be developing in Tableau. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Nikunj. Yeah, i just go by Nick. I, um, I'm, um, I'm a developer, uh, so uh, same as uh, other developers. Um, we are rolling out at scale and on top of Hadoop, um, and uh, we'll be doing the uh, Tableau development in future. Mm -hmm. All right, welcome to the session. Um, I can see Rubber 21. Um, I'm Rodney Bell. Um, I also work for Dinesh. I'm part of the at scale rollout team. Um, I have worked with Tableau a little bit. I think it's a very powerful tool for data discovery and reporting, and I'm excited to get back involved with it. So I work mm -hmm. with uh, Dinesh, Joe, Derek, Hong, and uh, other groups that are in here today, and so that's me. All right, welcome to the session. Thank uh, you. Shelley? Yeah, my name is Xiaoli. I work for the Quality Insight Project. I hope I learn a lot in the class so I can be the mm -hmm. developer for the Tableau. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, welcome to the session. Shri, uh, I think we have been having a lot of email interactions. That's right. Oh, any, <laughs> any introduction for me? Well, I'll just say, like, um, I've been working closely with um, Kathy, Carolyn, and Shelley, and mostly on the QI and Jack application. And um, basically want to see, like, um, how, I mean, eventually Tableau is going to be a reporting tool. So I want to see, like, if all our needs um, is, like, you know, uh, this tool meets our needs and the challenges that we have faced, this plan for a kind of it's resolved with this. 
All right. So welcome to the session. Looking forward for it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Valve is Valve. I can call. I'm sorry. I was on mute. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, no worries. <laughs> I'm good. I want to. I'm going to be working with Tableau more um, as a tester for Quality Insight um, in the reports that would be developed by our by Carolyn or Kathy or Shree or Shelley. Um, so I would be working on testing the um, completed report, not necessarily back end. So more front end Tableau, but it, it's nice to understand all of it in order to understand how the reports are created and just to be able to test them better. So that's why I'm on this um, training. But thank you, I'm looking forward to it. All right, welcome to the session. Now finally I can see when, uh, when last in the list. <laughs> last but not least, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I'm a member of the ARA data management team also. I'm involved in the AppScale rollout team. I manage and support SharePoint for our operation, also a number of Hub Connect sites. I've got interest in Tableau from the point of view is that um, I like to see where it fits into the overall scheme of things. I have a little bit of experience with Tableau, but I'm, I'm looking to you know, enhance my understanding. Great, great. Hope I'll meet your expectation during the training. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, uh, most of us are here. You know, they will be either using Tableau for as a development tool, or some of them will be, you know, using Tableau as a reporting tool, and they'll be working as an end user. So, I can expect a lot of question out of this session, and I would encourage that whatever we are going to cover here, please do that. Uh, on your desktop during during when I'm covering it, and ask as many questions as you have. So, having said that, I would like to know: uh, Is everybody uh, has a Tableau desktop, or maybe I mean, uh, we, we we already got to know that they are removing Tableau public from the system. But I think uh, today, or I mean, for first two sessions, we will we can use Tableau public. So everybody has this tool on their machine, right? Yes, I do. I have Tableau yeah. 10.0. Is that the oh. public one? No, 10.2. So if you have the desktop professional version, so that is the version which we need. And if it has you know public in its name, that would be you know a public version of it. I can show the icons of both the softwares. So, can I use the 10.0 or do I have to have the uh, public no, one? I think 10.2 10 point, 10 point is okay. Oh, okay, you have okay, yeah. So you can see that this is Tableau public, 8.1 I have on my machine, but it will be removed by, you know, the, I think IRM and software compliance team in coming two or three days. And uh, this is, 10.0, and I do have 10.1 in my machine, so I'll be using that. But if you have 10.2, that's fantastic. We can use that. So uh, everybody has this tool on the machine, right? Yeah, uh, Prati, I have yep. to say, like, I couldn't download it, you know, because it kind of restricts you, um, especially if I try the public version now. So yep. I'll be just reviewing, you know whatever you have on the WebEx, I'll just watch it. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's fine. So we are okay with the software uh, that is available with everybody. Now, the next thing is that this is the SharePoint. I think Wayne provided me access to this. So I hope everybody has access to this SharePoint. I'll be sharing this link on WebEx chat. If you don't have, please request the access because I am going to put some material, maybe the sample superstore, the database, data source which I'll be using during the training. This is the, uh, I would say, presentation, what I'll be covering. And then I have some of the eBooks on Tableau which you can leverage for, you know, going advanced, using advanced options, going into analytics using Tableau. So if we don't have access to the SharePoint, because I just clicked and got access denied, who should we tell? Is that Wayne or you? 
me. Well, you can tell me. You can tell me yeah. directly. No problem. All, all you guys should tell me as well. Okay, Wayne. Uh, I'll, I can drop you an email, but I, do, I just clicked on it, and it, it, okay. that, that's denied. Yes, Wait, it says access the denied. There should be a link access. directly from that access denied message. Okay, let me try again then. It says request access or something like that. Mm -hmm. Can you send an email to all of us about the share folder? It's in the link. Uh, it's in the link, <coughs> Shelley. It says it's current chat. user sign in as a different user. In the chat. Oh, might have got there. Oh, I got there. Great. So everybody has access to this SharePoint? Not yet. I'm trying to find it myself here, so I'm working on it here. Um, mm -hmm. Rodney, it's in yeah, data management think... services, just training documents. So okay. if you go to the data management services site, that's where you go to put in the new requests and what have you. What I can do uh, for this training, I can just share this Excel file which I'll be using as data source on could, the email. Uh, Wayne, could you just send me a quick link so yeah, I'm not trying to find it real quick? I apologize. Not a problem. I'll put it in the chat, actually. Let me get to it first of all. That, that'd, be, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Hold on yeah, a the error message on this is access deny. Yeah, it would be because so you unless you've got it. access. Yeah, unless you've got access to data management services, it won't allow you in. But as someone just said, and I didn't see who it was, sorry, that where you get the error message, it says request access, and there's a button you can press. All right. So uh, for, for this training purpose, what I'm going to do is I okay. will be okay. sharing this Excel file with everybody, or if you have Tableau installed, you will get the same file in your Tableau repository. Uh, let me just go through that. It's my Tableau repository, data sources, and you'll find that file on your system. Um, what files? Go ahead and say that again. Um, it's Tableau under. So you click Excel files. It'd be under 10.0, and be under English US, and then Sample Superstore. Exactly. So that is the file which we need for this training purpose. We'll be utilizing the data of this file as a data source, and we'll be you know, using this for analysis, creating chart, or whatever technical options we are going into Tableau. So I'll just open this file. You'll find three sheets in it. Um. It's just order, return, and people. Can you tell me again where I'm going? Data into. So first of all, you need to go to documents. Then you will find my Tableau repository folder. You need to click on it. Then you will get some other folders related to Tableau only. You need to click on data sources. Okay, I guess I'm really lost because you went to, do I went to shared documents? No, not shared this documents. Is, uh, this is your own, this looks like your C drive, is that right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think, it, is, is it part of the install of Tableau maybe that it drops yes. your yes. folders yes. into your install? into your C okay, drive. got it. Yeah. So I go to documents, mm -hmm. then where? I'm really my, sorry. My tablet repository. Got it. 
then data sources mm -hmm. and inside of it whatever version you have right now on your machine so let's say I, I mean I have different versions of Tableau installed so, so the that's latest really strange because I have Tableau 10 but this says 9.3 and archive so let's say if you go inside the archive, you will find sample superstore there also. No, but it's empty. Archive's empty. Okay. So you can use that 9.3. You will have the same file because uh, we are using the same files from 8, 9, 10 in all versions. Okay. And then you said we should open superstore? So, yeah. So for data understanding, yeah, definitely we can open it. But uh, what I would prefer is that we can see this data once it is imported in the Tableau environment. So we will be you know, trying to see or maybe understanding this data, how we can do some analysis using the same data in Tableau. But I open the Excel spreadsheet, am I right? That's fine. That's fine. That's 100% okay. There's no problem in that. But you would rather me open up the Tableau data source? Is that what you yes. were saying? Yeah, I'll be, you know, connecting the same file with the Tableau. Okay, I just want to make sure because I have, like, Tableau data source and Tableau extract, so I'm not sure where. Okay. Okay. So you, I you need to go to Tableau data source. Okay. I will open that. Mm -hmm. Sorry for all the confusion. No worries. No worries. All the questions are welcomed here. All right, so as I mentioned that I have, you know, a couple of versions of Tableau, so that I'll be, you know, I'll just open this, the latest version I have. I mean, right now you can see 10.2 is in the market, but uh, some folks in the USG itself, they have 10.2, 10.1, but I have not upgraded mine. Uh, it is 10.0 only. So I'll be using this during the training. Uh, there are you know, a couple of things which they have added on the advanced level side. So if you go to 10.2, they have given connectivity with Python, and there is one more, you know, I would say added it. So they have added that you can, uh, they have given an option of highlighter in Tableau itself. So that's the new version in 10.2, uh, and this is same as what I have in 10 or 10.1. Should we be seeing the same thing you're seeing? Not necessary again. You will have this blue area and this discover area. These two things you will have common and rest these things you will not be, you know, getting on your machine because these are the recent files which I have worked on. So, so do I have to actually say file open and then I get it? Is that my issue? Uh, could you please repeat? What are you getting? I think I did this wrong. I think I need to, oh, what do you know? When, when you're in, when you open Tableau, that's when you say file open and you go to this. No. So, I mean, once you will open it, these are the just cache uh, files which you can see here. I would say, let me just open a notepad and let me tell you that what you I have no idea. I'm so, I'm holding everybody up and I just, I see nothing. That's why I'm asking when I open Tableau, I don't see anything. Okay. So we can, you know, uh, Nancy, we can see on your desktop also. Uh, I'll, I'll, let me just start. As soon as we will start doing something on Tableau, I'll come to that and we'll see that if there is any problem, we can Thank sort you. it out. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. So before uh, you know, I get into some more on the tableau. Let me just go to this slide, which you know I'll be sharing. Uh, this is already there on the SharePoint. So I would just request everybody that uh, we need to make this session more interactive. So please stop doing multitasking and please focus here because I will be you know maybe asking any of you to you know do exactly what I'm doing uh, during the session. Maybe any task. So please be ready for that. All right, so we here now as we follow in all the trainings. And then I have already talked about myself, that where I, you know, belong to and where I work.
I am I'm in 2.30 to 12 shift at the India time. So if you need any help related to Tabli, you can ping me, drop me an email. I will be available to help you out. Apart from that, uh, before I you know go to next slide, let me, uh, I mean, for the people who want to know more about Tableau, I would ask them to just create a profile on Tableau.com or Tableau Public because this is the best source, uh, best material the Tableau organization have provided for training purpose. So if you go to galleries, you will, galleries basically, you will find a lot of dashboards which are, you know, prepared by different folks all across the globe, they create it and post it on Tableau Public site. So they can, you know, if you can download them, they will help you a lot because sometimes we don't know how a particular thing works, maybe a parameter, how does that work? So we can utilize these dashboards for learning purposes. Another thing is resources here. I would say, this is the place where Tableau organization itself have given in a number of videos. You can go ahead, explore them. They have provided data source attached to them or whatever exercise or whatever action or task they are creating, whatever chart visualization they are creating, they are using the same data so database or data, data set. So you can you know, practice online as well. So, these are not the only videos apart from this you will find, you know, the live training or uh, uh, I would say the list of trainings is already there on the site. So it's a very rich, resourceful website which you can follow and learn a lot about Tableau. What, I mean, when I say learn a lot about Tableau, it covers what all, what is already there in the Tableau. Number two, what different folks from the community are requesting to get in Tableau. The community is here. People refer, if they see any limitation in Tableau, they request Tableau organization to add that in here. So you can suggest, you can share your ideas the way we do with the bright ideas in UNG. So you can share your ideas with the Tableau organization and get a specific functionality to be added in Tableau. All right. So that. That is one, and then I would say this is the another URL, tableau.com supports knowledge base. Let me just open it. It has a list of other videos uh, which I referred apart from this gallery or the resources tab. So you can see here, just give me a minute, the explorer is quite slow, okay. So it, it has all the videos step by step, how you get started, best practices, how you're going to create, uh, you know, calculated fields, different type of connections, how you prepare your data to be used in Tableau any license, activation, performance, dashboard, visualization, that is all here. So you can take the help of this also. All right. So when you, you know, we were talking about the products or different products provided by Tableau. So uh, this is the Tableau desktop version. I mean, Tableau provides several types of products which we are using here in UHG. So normally for development purpose or any developer in UHG or any organization, they need Tableau desktop. That is, that has this icon. You can see it's 10.0 right now, but this is a Tableau desktop version which a developer needs. Then uh, this Tableau public is, uh, you know, another, I would say, uh, product provided by Tableau. It is freely available. But the problem is uh, the way we do in case of Tableau Desktop, we create anything, we deploy a USB environment. That is not possible when we use Tableau Public. Anything we create in Tableau Public, that needs to be saved only on 
this public.tableau.com. Tableau Public doesn't give you flexibility to, flexibility to save anything either on your machine or on any other server except tableaupublic.com. And that is the reason it is freely available. Uh, Tableau Readers, it's another product provided by Tableau itself. We cannot develop anything. We cannot see the live feeding in it. However, whatever has been developed in Tableau desktop or professional version, we can just see that in Tableau Readers. So a uh, few folks use Tableau Reader in order to see whatever is being developed in Tableau desktop. And I would say the more people or the uh, across organizations, we use Tableau Server or Tableau Online in order to share existing dashboards, reports, and view whatever is being developed in Tableau. So these are the two things, I mean, first two icons, Tableau Desktop and Tableau Server, what they, uh, that they, these two have been, you know, used across UAG also. These both are paid. Developer needs Tableau desktop, and the user just need access to this Tableau server. They don't need any kind of application. So let's say if I'm end user, I can just, you know, get an URL. I'll show you the environment, what we have in UAG. So let's now orbit tableau.uhg.com. This is our production environment. Similarly, you will have another, I mean, there are two more environments. That is, let me, this is the development environment. And similarly, we have a testing environment provided by UAG Tableau Growth. So you can write down like this also. Recently, they have you know changed the URLs. They added audit before this, but earlier it was only w hyphen dev dot uhc dot com. It was a environment, and this was the production environment. So whatever projects we have access to on a Tableau server, you will see them listed here. Sorry, these are the sites. Once you select a site, inside a site you will find number of projects. And then these are the different workbooks which are already deployed, by whom, you can see the name, when it was modified, what is the size of a workbook, how many sheets it contains. I'll come to sheets and workbook concept. How many times this workbook has been seen, so it gives me the count also. So that's all, I mean, it is not all on Tableau Server. I'll be covering this when we'll be you know, publishing something on Tableau Server. So I'll cover more on these tabs also, that how we can see users, how we can add people in group, how we can share a workbook with the end users. So that I'll be you know, covering maybe in the third session. Uh, I'll go back to Tableau Desktop, and this is the software which I'm you know, talking about. So we just open this using this icon. All right, so the slide talks about the different components which I'll be covering today, basically. So I'll just close it. I will not refer a lot to this slide. I'll go by topic by topic. And yes, now we can talk about the problem what uh, I think Nancy was getting. Right. Oh, okay, do, do you need me to share my desktop? Exactly, please. Okay. Let me just give you presenting right. Here we go. Okay, let me share. So I went here, 10.0. And I opened this file, Tableau Data Source. Was that correct? Mm, so this is the, I would say, data source which we uh, create in Tableau. Uh, this is okay. not the, yeah, I mean, uh, 
by clicking on it, you will directly open what uh, maybe if I use Tableau Desktop, I will we'll reach to this after following a couple of steps. So, so this, this is this is what opened, right? The yes. file. So I wasn't seeing. So I guess what I did wrong is I opened Tableau with mm -hmm. that with that because of that file as opposed to what you really wanted me to do was just open Tableau. Whoops, wrong one. Shoot. Um, okay, that's fine. It, it was 9.3, I guess, right? So, yeah, but I have 10, so I'm not sure why. Um, you can see that in all programs. Now, go down. 10. Oh, okay. Did you see 10? Yeah, it was up there on the icon up towards the top. A little further. There, there it is. It is. Okay. Yeah. I guess I need to get rid of that off of my... Okay, so, all right, so this is where you wanted me to be, is this correct? Yeah, that's 100% correct. Okay, so I'm sorry, I thought I was supposed to open a file, but mm -hmm. I understand now that's a file that's used in Tableau, not how I should be opening Tableau. Right. And so I'm going to close this one because that was the wrong, let me just make sure I'm on it, okay. Now I don't know where I am for, okay, let me just close these both, and then I'll uh -huh. open the, ten, the version 10 to make sure I have that open. Um, and that was in all programs. Okay, so I think I'm where everybody is, is that correct? Okay, I will be quiet and learn now. Thank you. No worries. I mean, I would request you to ask questions whenever you have any doubt or, you know, so that good to know that where we are. Yes, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let me share my screen again. All right, so uh, I'll just go back again and let me click on this tableau. So as soon as I open this, you know, application, I, okay. Uh, these are the workbooks which, you know, recently I have worked on that it automatically shows. But apart from this, this is the area which is of our use. And let's say if you want to, you know, go to the knowledge base which I shared or maybe some of the videos if you want to see, you can go to this area, this training, getting started. So this is nothing but the same link for tableau.com or public.tableau.com. So uh, I'll talk more about this site. So this area connect, it talks about the different type of data sources which we can connect in Tableau. Now, by default, uh, the Tableau public application, anybody who has Tableau, uh, Tableau public only, they will see only Excel, text file, access, statistical files, and few more options like Google Sheet or maybe Web Data Connector. Uh, there are a number, very few options that are available in Tableau public. Though it is a full version, I have these basic you know, options or connectors with that, I can click on this more option and as soon as I do that, you'll see a lot of, you know, I would say other, about 50 or more than 50 options which you can connect and import the data in Tableau environment. So you can directly connect to Hadoop, if you want to connect to SQL Server, that option is available. If you want to connect Google Analytics, you can do that. IBM, HP Vertica, and Oracle, MySQL, uh, I mean, you can connect to any. Apart from this, recently we are doing some research that let's see if I need to get the live feed from blogs or maybe the so social networking site, let's say Facebook or Twitter, I can get that data using Web Data Connector APIs. So that is what you can, you know, get the data directly into Tableau environment and do some analysis. Uh, having said that, let me 
click on Excel because I mentioned in the beginning that I will be using Sample Superstore. So before I go ahead and click on Excel, uh, uh, does anybody have any questions so far related to products, related to maybe the corrections available here, maybe uh, which version you should be using for your project, or maybe any question related to how to set up a project in Tabby Server? Tati, I see you're recording this session. Would you be sharing that with the um, participants too later on? Uh, uh, these details you're talking about? Yeah, the whole WebEx session. Like, would you be sharing yeah, that, yeah. or is it for yeah. your own? Yeah, so this is right now re being recorded, and I'll be sharing the same link with everyone. Okay, thank you. All right. So, if there is no question related to data sources or maybe the product, I, will I just have one question. This is Carolyn. Um, yeah, Carolyn. Uh, it, when you're creating a report, does all the data get uploaded to um, Tableau's, uh, the Tableau.com that you were showing us earlier? Mm, so uh, that is the clause I would say when you are using Tableau Public because that oh, okay. is. Okay, so you can yeah. publish it to a certain one? Okay, because I'm just curious about how PHI is handled. Right. So. Uh, I mean, uh, right uh, nowadays you might have received an email that uh, that IRM team or software team is removing Tableau Public from all the machines. Uh, that is the only reason because using Tableau Public you cannot save anything within in uh, I mean on your machine or on within UHG network. Whatever you save, that used to go to cloud Tableau Cloud, and that was not safe. Oh, that okay. is why. That is why they have, you know, they are running an initiative and removing Tableau Public from all the machines. Now, if you have Tableau Desktop and you are deploying to Tableau Server, Tableau Server, when I say Tableau Server, it is nothing but uh, these environments, uh, yep, orbit-tableau.uhc.com or the development environment which I shared. So these are internal to UHG. Whatever is deployed here will not be accessible outside UHG network. Okay, so what you publish, you have to pu whatever you're publishing it to, you should publish it to something with a UHC in the in the URL. Yes. Okay. So thank these you. These are the standard servers provided by W infrastructure uh, for UHG. Okay. Thanks. Right. And uh, there is one more thing in it. So, I mean, whatever reports we create, if you have access to a particular project, you can see all the reports inside of this folder. But those reports might have PHI and PIO information. And that, I mean, it is possible that I don't want to share that information with everybody within the USG environment. For that, there are different roles, different permissions, we define while deploying a file. So I will be covering that in our third session when we'll be publishing a workbook to these environments. So I think we are good so far. We can go ahead. So yes, I'll just click, yeah, I'll just click on Excel option here. And as soon as I click, it will give me option to browse a file. And this is the same location you can see, my documents, tablet repository, data sources, 10.0, US hyphen us So this is the same file which I wanted to connect, my sample super store data. I'll select it. Click OK. It will import everything in Tableau environment. And then you will find this screen. Here you can see what file or maybe the connection you are you know, connected with. These are the different sheets which were there in my sam sample superstore Excel file. If you want to see that what type of data is there, you can click any time on view data. 
you can get a preview of it. Right? And you can drag any sheet into this area, drag sheets here. As soon as the sheet is dragged here, you will again see the preview. And if you want, you can do some kind of customization here also. Maybe if you want to change the name of columns, you can do that. Maybe you want to, you know, limit some of the fields, you can do that. Uh, so by default, as by the time it is the grid icon is, you know, selected, you can see the complete data. As soon as you will click here, you will see the metadata of your connected data. Metadata is the information about what type of fields are there in the data. It talks about the table, then row ID column is the row ID, order ID, so these things are there. Uh, if you want to, you know, maybe sort your data just for, you know, review purpose, you can do that here. You can see that data. Uh, let's say my data is in multiple sheets, right? So in case of Excel right now, I would say less, th there, there are, you know, same number of fields in two different sheets, and you want to combine that data. So Tableau gives you option of union. You can apply union between two sheets and club the data of uh, this, uh, you know, clubbing of data would be vertical. So it means the number of rows of first sheet, it will be, that will be appended by the data in the sheet two. So it works as a union here. Uh, had it been a connection with, let's say SQL Server, uh, I can just go ahead and add another connection. Adding a connection can be done from multiple ways. So that you can just click on this add option here and add any type of connection from here. You will see the same list. It is just they have given a scroll bar here. Or go to data, add new data source, the same window again. Or let's say if you're connected to data and then uh, you're working with the data and suddenly you thought we need to add more or maybe another data source, you can do at that stage also. I'll just show that uh, once I'm in the worksheet area. So, um, so far I'm connected to this Excel file. In here, right now you can see it is live connection. You have option of extract. So as if I click on extract, Tableau is going to create, I would say a copy of the same data in its environment and the same location here, you can see that other files are there with the extension of PDE. It is nothing but Tableau data extract. So if I create extract, click extract here, so Tableau will, whatever data it, it will get from Excel file, it will convert that into, you know, a compatible file with PDE version and it will save that repository here. And going forward, Tableau will be using that extract only. Though it is in Tableau format, it will be very fast with the comparison of Excel file. So that's the reason, I mean, most of the time, we recommend to use extract because Tableau works best in the extracted data. Uh, on server, it gives you functionality to refresh your data extract on periodical basis. So we'll see that how it how does that happen. But right now, I mean, as we go ahead, I'll be creating extract, but not right now. Uh, in next step, I'll be creating extract. Uh, there is another option provided on the same window. Let's say I'm getting the data of all the countries and segments right now. Uh, let's say there is no requirement of a particular segment for analysis. I'll prefer to filter out that data here only. I don't want that data to go into Tableau environment. So I'll be adding filters from here. You can see this filters option. I can click on add, add filters. It will give me the list of all the fields in Tableau. 
uh, not in tabli basically the data source which i have connected to i can select any particular field click okay tabli will give me the name of though i have selected city i think it's giving me the list of all the cities in data and based on the list either i can select only for uh, to see the data of only these you know cities or i can exclude these so this so that this data will not go forward for further analysis it will be revoked only for these particular cities so i can exclude or include that option is available by default i use all or use all thing i can you know create my own custom list so let's say if i want to see the data of only one or two cities i can add them from here i can pass wild cards i can put a condition that i want to see only this data or maybe i if i already have something i can see top 10 by count or by you know let's say if i select sales i'm going to see some so i want to see only top 10 cities by sales so these are the various filters which are available at data source level which one can apply there would be same window for filters when once we are inside of workbook so that would be for data area but right now this is everything based for data source so any confusion any question here you talked about taking two sheets from a same spreadsheet and you can do a union to combine a single report Uh, mm -hmm. Does the headers and everything in those two sheets should be the same then, right? Yeah, for union, this is the I would say constraint or minimum requirement. I mean that is the only requirement for union. You must have same filter, sorry, same headers. So that is for union. So, but for join, but for join, uh, that is not required. For join, you must have a common column or a uh, field with the same values you can join so uh, right now in you for union i don't uh, i think i don't have that data it is uh, in one sheet i have two fields in second sheet i have again two sheets but nothing is common and in first one i have a lot of fields uh i can uh, what i can do is i can apply a join maybe so let me just connect to sql i'll use server name database it is optional right now because our uh, tablet gives you functionality to connect multiple data so databases from one server so i'm not putting anything there right now i'll just click on sign in to this server you can see that here i uh, we can see two different connections one is sample superstore another is with microsoft sql server now it's giving me option to select a database i have the list of all the databases on this particular server i can go ahead and select one database i have selected rara test db and now after this you will see that it's giving me the list of all the tables number 1 it's giving me option to write my own custom sql so maybe if i want to write a query i can go ahead and do that and third thing is it's giving me the list of all the stored procedures available on that particular database so i can use those stored procedures also directly in this window So for a moment I'll just remove this the orders which was you know coming from sample super store and I'll drag some of the maybe tables from the connected database which I have you know 
disconnected. Let me just see some data. Okay, it does not have any. Okay, it's an employee table, and it has a region, salary, ID. Let me just. Okay, it has name and employee table, it has region. I'm looking for a common field so that I can join these tables. Okay, I can see uh, we have this, this salary column here, and in this table we have the salary column. I'm not sure the values are matching or not, but I'll just show you that how a join works. So I'll just drag one of my table, and then I can drag another table together. So as soon as I drag two tables in this environment, what Tableau does, it gives you how you are, how do you want to combine these tables? What type of join you want to use? Whether it is in inner, outer, sorry, left, right, or full outer. So based on, you know, the join you want to select, then it gives you what criteria you want to apply. So let me just add, let's say, salary if I'm using. Salary from first table, salary from another table, like this. And as soon as, you know, I have selected the fields here, you can put more conditions also if you want. If you want, you can apply greater than, less than. Uh, that functionality is also available. But right now, let's say for inner join, I'm using this equal to. As soon as I have put this criteria here, there was a exclamation sign on this joining icon that has gone away. I can't see that now. So I'll just close it. My join is set up. I can see update now. And it's going to show me uh, any data if there is any particular joining happened or not. So. I don't see because those values were not matching properly. It has salary of this, and it has salary all across 10,000. Nothing is matching. Let me just see if I can add ID. Okay, let me just change this criteria to ID. Maybe I'm able to join anything. So it's department number from one table. I can change it to department number. And here I'll be using ID. Update now. Now you can see, I've just changed those fields. So there are three records which I can see. Though it was inner join, so it will give me only those records which are 100% matching. Otherwise, it will not. So we can apply joins. Or let's say if you don't want to do that here, this joining, you can directly write your query and put any join, any you know conditions in the SQL form. You can directly write. So I'll just do one more thing. I'll just remove everything from here. I'll drag it. And I'll write my own query. Let's just select the star from uh, GST and now, now, query like that wouldn't work from an Excel file, would it? Uh, uh, do you mean uh, I need to give if you the join two Excel files? I'm just curious. Okay. Uh, Excel you're file. doing the SQL joins right there, but go ahead and continue. I'm just wondering if you could write SQL queries to join two Excel files, but. Okay. But no, I'm just, okay. So writing a query using Excel file, you mean? Okay. Let me just see that, and it's, if that is possible, yeah, I can share that. 
Oh, no, I was just curious. You don't have to go down. I was just asking if that would only work SQL when you were in the SQL database. If X, when you join two Excel sheets, if it's joined differently, you do have to use the join routines there or not. So that's just the correct question I had. So, uh, okay, let's say if you want to you know, join two different sheets, I have just dragged orders. I'll drag people, sorry, let me just add returns because I remember we have common field call order ID here. Okay. That is possible, you can join, but writing a query that I need to look because... Oh no, uh, it's, 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 if you knew right offhand. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so we can apply joints using Excel sheets also. So that's all, uh, I mean, we have connected to SQL Server and Excel files. So I'll just keep the note of this, you know, writing query using Excel, but apart from that, is there any other question related to data connectivity? Or maybe the joining options, extract, filters, Anything? Okay. All right. Just one thing to add. Whenever we are connected with a SQL Server, we can definitely write our own query, uh, but let's say there is a big query and we are using, uh, I, would, I would say not a big query, but let's say there is, you know, combination of queries which we are using here and let's say there are temporary tables in it. In that case, it will give problem because temporary tables are not supported by Tableau. So either you will have to write a complete stored procedure or maybe you can use sub queries, but don't use uh, every table while writing a query here in Edit Custom SQL. There is one more option given in this window that is create a new parameter. So uh, that again, uh, you know, works like this filters which are, you know, on data source level. I'll be, you know, covering this when we are, you know, going to cover parameters. So uh, this is uh, parameters and filters. They are basically uh, used to limit our data but there are, you know, different ways how we use it. So I'll be covering when uh, maybe the second session will, I'll, when I'll, you know, talking about parameters. So I think so far we are good on this window. Uh, anytime, uh, once we are, let's say, we are set up with our data, we can move ahead. So we can click on this sheet one, and as soon as we click, we get this area, what, Nancy was getting at that time by directly clicking on a tableau data source. So this is the window wherein you can see a sheet icon. So this is nothing but the new sheet or worksheet icon. This icon is for new dashboard with four quadrants. The dashboard is an area where we can drag and drop multiple sheets, multiple charts to showcase many things at one location. Third icon is for use a storyboard or, you know, this is for a new story. So basically dashboard is used wherein we want to show many things at the same time. We use dashboard. Uh, but let's see if you want to create a kind of story that how your business was doing in last year, what's your current status, and if it keep on working with if we keep on working with the same pace, how it's gonna be the future. So if we create that sort of you know visualization and we want to put it in the storyboard, I think storyboard is the best thing to show the past, present, and future of a particular business. So we'll be you know, talking more about these things, dashboards and story. But in here, uh, on this window specifically, the sheet one area which you can see, we call it a visualization area, wherein we drag our, drag our dimensions and measures. Now you can see that what are dimensions and measures. 
So basically, the sales which are more categorical, they are, you know, uh, they by default move into dimensions field or dimensions area. The fields which are either numeric in nature or uh, we can do some analysis using them or we can put aggregation on them, they uh, come by default into measures area. So that is how, you know, uh, Tableau automatically identifies that which field is going to be in dimensions and measures. But yes, it's up to us. If you want, we can, you know, drag and drop and convert maybe a dimensional field into measures. We can just drag a field, let's say order ID have just, you know, dragged from dimension to measure. Similarly, a measure field can also be dragged into dimension. But we do this by, you know, understanding the impact. If we don't do that, uh, the nature of analysis will change completely. Can you say again um, what the reasoning behind dimensions are, like how Tableau automatically assumes it's a dimension field? So dimensions are more, uh, more the categorical fields, I would say. So anything which is in na uh, numeric in nature, that will be, you know, that will come into measure area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when okay. we say when we say measure, so there are uh, okay. So uh, these are these are things basically we report for, and uh, these are the I, things. I do. Like I, do I, 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 I did. Mm -hmm. I did understand measurements. I just wanted to make sure I understood how it okay. thought, how it categorized dimensions. That's all. All right. So, Thank you. Uh, no worries. So in here you can see two different tabs. One is data, another is analytics. So uh, in data side, you will see all your you know data elements, major dimensions. If we create groups, sets, or maybe parameters, they will appear here only. But analytics tab is specifically for maybe the trend analysis, forecasting, uh, creating few charts. So that is what analytics tab will come in picture. Okay. And then uh, there is one more and I would say usable option show me. So this gives me, you know, the by default charts. So whatever, let's say if I, if I select my two measures here, it highlights those charts which can be created using these dimension and measure combination. So now I need not to do anything. I just need to click on these charts. They will create a visualization using the fields which I selected. So that is what, you know, the best use of show me option. But apart from this, it gives me a little more information. Let's see if I hover your mouse on a particular visualization, it talks about, you know, here in bottom that what are the requirements for this thing. If I want to create a scatter plot, I need zero or more dimensions and two or more measures. Similarly, for pie chart, I need one dimension, one or two measures. So uh, we'll be covering these uh, charts one by one. Uh, before that, uh, this area, we call it column shelf. This is the row shelf. This is the page card, filter card, and this is the mask card. I call these, you know, little icons here, uh, maybe the buttons or pills, whatever you want to say. So these are the different options provided by Tableau to do, you know, I would say maybe the cosmetics or putting value, whatever we create in dashboard or in Tableau. So this is all, you know, being covered here in the slides also, which I'll be sharing. What do we call maybe a workbook, data window, cards, toolbars? So that, okay. There is one more thing. Uh, as we have connected to, you know, different fields, now you can see there are different icons before a field. So let's say for category, it is ABC. For city and country, I see a globe icon. Again, customer ID, I have ABC icon. For order date, I'm getting a calendar. 
Um, if I go a little down, you will see for row ID, I have a hash mark. And then again in measures area, you will find the similar uh, icons here, hash mark, or maybe this globe icon, but the color is a little different. So to more, talk more about it, wherever you see ABC, it says that this field is a string type or text type. The data type of this field is text. If you find a globe, it is a basically a geographical field, or maybe it is including a geocode, so that can be plot for our maps. I mean, that field can use to plotting into maps. If you find calendar, obvious it's date, and if it is in hash mark, that meant, talks that that mentions that these are the fields. They are either numeric in nature, or you know, yeah. I mean, first of all, they are numeric. Uh, but if the color is different, here you see it's a blue color, and here you can see it's green color. So the difference between these two is, if it is blue, this means it is discrete. It's a row ID. If I talk, if I talk about our employee ID, that is numeric in nature, but it, we cannot, you know, sum employee IDs. We cannot find, we cannot add to employee IDs. Those are discrete in nature, right? Uh, whereas the fields with the green sign and this hash mark, these are continuous fields. We can add sales. We can average out. We can add quantities. We can add profits of two different regions. We can find out the discount. We can average it out. So that's the difference between discrete and continuous. To talk more, let's say there are 10 people in a room. So the count 10 people, I mean, though we can add 10 people uh, count of people in the room, that is 10, but again, there cannot be a decimal number for count of people. So I cannot say that I, there are 10.5 people in this room. And wherever this, uh, such condition occurs, that number is discrete, not continuous. And wherever we find that, uh, you know, the numbers are in decimal or they are, you know, running, running, let's say, if I talk about temperature, right, let's say it's for, uh, Fahrenheit or in degree Celsius, so that is again a continuous field because we can say that yeah, it is 45.5 degrees Celsius right now. So that's a continuous field, not discrete. So hope everybody is clear on discrete, continuous, and these different icons here. Yes. yes. All right. Yes. Great. One more thing to add. Uh, the row number, oh, sorry, number of records field. This is automatically created. It was not in my Excel file or whatever data source I used. It is created by Tableau itself. Measure value is again created by Tableau. Uh, there is one more field measure names. It is again provided by Tableau itself. But why I was focusing on this number of records, you can see there is a small equal sign before this, which is not there in any other field right now. Any idea? Shows is calculated. Exactly, 100% correct. So it is calculated, though it is uh, you know directly uh, provided by Tableau. But in future, or maybe as we go ahead, go forward, we'll be creating our own fields. And when we when we will be working with our own calculated fields, each field will have you know equal sign before this, whether it is of us geographic field, whether it is a, you know, string type or numeric type, it will have equal sign. That shows it is a calculated field and calculated by the developer. All right, so we talked about TDS, not TDS. We talked about TD, tabulated extract. TDS file is the same file which Nancy clicked on. 
So this is again what we can create uh, in Tableau, and I'll be creating extract in a, in a minute so that I can show that how we can create extract and that can be utilized for you know, analysis purpose, whether we are connected live to the network or not. All right, so uh, this was the data source which I'm connected to, orders, and uh, it shows multiple connections. So if I drag it a little bit, okay, it's not doing so. Uh, if I, I was connected to two different data sources, and that is the reason it is showing multiple connections, but right now I'm not using other connection in any sheet. That's why it shows only one. But let's say if I need to make Tableau extract or maybe the extract of this data, I'll just right click here. I have you know another option. I just need to click here, right click. It shows edit data source. I can, if I click on it, I'll go back to the same window wherein I was working with my data. I can refresh my data. I can view my data. It will give me the same preview of it. I can rename the data source, duplicate. I can create a copy, close the data source. And this is here what I was talking about, creating extract. So I'll just click on it, create extract. And if you want to apply filters, you can do that. You'll get the same window again, selecting filters for city, country, anything, whatever you want. If you want to aggregate your data, that you can also do that. Um, right now I'm selecting all rows, but we have option to do the incremental refresh. Incremental is, let's say, uh, till today morning I have, you know, let's say 10,000 records in my data, in data extract, uh, incremental will, you know, add only new records coming into your data source so that the whole data extract will not be created again. It will keep appending only the new records if I select incremental refresh. I click on it, extract. It will give me option to save where I want to save my extract. So let's say I'll go to a particular location and I'll give it a name called patch2. And this is the name so far. You can see the extension TDE, Tableau Data Extract. Let's say I'll say Superstore, and I'll click Save. So it's running the complete query, extracting that data, and saving into the defined location what I have done. As soon as I have done that, this icon here, you will see the double cylinder or double database. That shows it is an extract. I can right click, you will see this option, use extract is automatically selected. Uh, to go further, if I click on this icon, sorry, not that, uh, let's see, go back to the edit data source window. And here you will see that extract preview button is selected and it is giving a message that extract includes all data for this date till this time when I created it. If you want to refresh, you can do that. If you want to edit, you will see the window again. You can edit your data source or the extract what we have created. Right, so any questions so far for data extract? Would you recommend a live connection or an extract? Um, reports running against an extract. Okay. So I guess a live connection would be you're connecting to the database directly, right? Right. So live connection, whenever we select it live, it means it is, you know, every time a user goes, sees a report, this report will head to the server. And that is the reason we don't recommend for live connection. I mean, if my data is fully optimized, there is no lag, and the report has very less data. Live connections are good because I'm getting live feed. 
But uh, when we talk about our environment, whether it is claims data, provider data, it's, you know, huge data. And in that scenario, if let's say if I have a report or maybe I'm trying to show somebody directly from a live data source, it is going to be very slow, number one. And let's say there are 10 users looking at a particular report. So anytime those 10 users will see that report, they, they will click any option on that report. Each time this report is going to hit my server. So that is increasing traffic. And because, because of that, we don't recommend to use live connections. We use extract so that my database is not getting hit every time a, a user wants to see the report. And now the question comes that then how a user will see the latest data. So for that, Tableau Server provides you several schedules to refresh your extract. So you can, you know, create or maybe you can set up a schedule for hourly refresh, or if your data is not, you know, getting refreshed frequently, you can set up a refresh for a day so that every day in the morning you have the latest data, and throughout the day you will be looking at the same data. Next day you come in office, again your data extract got refreshed automatically, and you will have data till that day. So, those options are there, and we'll be you know covering that when uh, I mean in the third session basically. So that's here. Now another concept comes. Uh, let's say some of my data coming from uh, let's say Excel file, and some of data is coming from my SQL server. I'm talking about. I need to join data coming from two different sources. So we, we talked about like uh, Tableau gives you functionality to add data source here. And let's say if I use this connection only, as let's say selected Rara test DB, or maybe any database, okay, Rara test DB here. I'll drag one table. Not sure whether it has data. Okay, it has. Now I'm here in this window. Now let's say my project needs that I I need a feed out of these both data sources. This is my old one and this is the new data which I have disconnected. So had it been the same data source, I could have applied join the way we did in case of here, because bo both the sheets were related to one Excel file and I applied join. But now in this case, my data is coming from two different sources, one is X SQL and one is Excel. I cannot apply, apply joins here. For this situation, a concept is called blending, wherein I can combine data coming from two different sources or I can say it in other way, I can join these both data sources. How? If you click on data tab, it gives you edit relationship options. If I go there, uh, right now the data which I have, you know, uh, one is the order data, another is the ox code. There is no common column between those. Had it been a common column, Tableau automatically would have you know, joined both the data sources. This is the primary data source, this is the secondary data source it is giving me. But let's see if I try forcefully, I can click on custom and then I can add on what fields I want to join these. Maybe for Ox data source or Ox code, I'll take Ox name, and from my orders data, I can take any field coming from another data source. That's a category. I know there is no common thing about these, but as soon as you select those, or you can add more combination bases which you want to join, you can keep adding here. 
And once you do that, you need to click OK. And you can, you know, drag the fields coming from, you know, any of the data source into one sheet. Right now, uh, it's not showing basically an icon. Okay. Which, let me just see if we have date here. Hmm. Okay. Just give me a moment. I'll take any field which should have a date. Now, if the dates are in two different formats, you probably edit them in each of the tables. It's a calculated field and join them afterwards, and correct? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay, this 
time you can see I just got category here and the date field is coming from the another data source. Uh, it shows 2006 but uh, in the data area I have not taken anything. So let's say if that is required I can go ahead and maybe drag my profit. This will not, okay, it was giving me one pop-up that the field cannot be used from aux code data source because there is no relationship to the primary data source. In the data window, switch it to aux code data source and click at least one link icon to blend these data sources. So this is nothing but this icon it was talking about, right? As soon as I do that, I don't find any match and it's giving me null. So if you have, you know, uh, I would say the same type of data sources or maybe uh, data source which are making, uh, which we can really join, definitely we can go ahead and apply blending. But now the question comes, when to use blending and when to use join? So I think I have already mentioned this. If my data is coming from single data source, maybe it is, uh, there are 10 tables which I want to, you know, get the data from and they are coming from one same source, I'll be using join. And uh, let's say uh, if data is coming from two different sources, one is being Excel, SQL, or maybe one is being Oracle or Access Database, whenever the data sources are different, I'll be using blending. Blending by default uses, you know, the left join only. This is these fields. It is the default left join. Uh, but it is a little slow, so, uh, but that is the only option we have here if data is coming from different sources. So, very, in very rare case we use blending. Uh, most of the time we are getting data from one source only and we use joins. So, that is the thing. Uh, you can see here that this uh, red mark is coming into this sheet that is again talks about that these fields are coming based out of blending. These are, the, these are not the direct field. Anything here, uh, I mean, in these data sources, you can see one is having red mark, one is blue. So blue means we are using it actively in this sheet. Uh, in this sheet, I have just inserted a new sheet. I'm not using any data source, any field here. Now, you can't see any of those icons. Now I'll select aux and let's say I drag a field. It has got blue icon, but there is nothing from orders. So I'll join it and maybe I can drag product ID here. Now you can see the color got changed. So that, uh, that is on the blending side. I mean, unfortunately, I don't have that data here, uh, the common data between both the tables. So that's why uh, uh, there is null only as soon as I blend both the data sources. Uh, as soon as I'm putting my mouse here, it shows stop using order data as linking field. So it's self-explanatory, and whenever it is required, we can use it. So. I'll just close it. I mean, uh, do we have any question on the blending and join? Or are we good so far? Yes. All right. Let me remove. Field. I'll remove my which sheet as well. Okay, I can directly go to this worksheet and clear everything. That's fine. All right. So so far we covered uh, the environment we are in. Dimensions, measures, data sources, type of connections, uh, and we got connected our data, which will be you know going ahead and doing some analysis. So uh, I would say, I mean, if I think we need to take a break here. Uh, do you guys also need a break?
maybe i can you know uh, we can regroup again after 20 minutes and then we will focus on filters how to sort data group hierarchies and set okay good Okay. Pause yeah. it. So, yeah, we'll just you know uh, regroup after twenty minutes. Okay. okay thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Recording right. started. All right. So we can you know leverage this show me option provided by Tableau, and uh, the one part which I you know already mentioned that let's say if you select any particular field. Tableau automatically, you know, shows that what visualization out of this show me you can create. So, if let's see, if I select two measures here, discount and profit, it gives me option for this bar chart, horizontal bar. It gives me a scatter plot as an option, and then it gives me the third option, the bullet graphs. So, these are the three options given when I'm selecting discount and profit together. Now, a simple could be uh, because both are measures. Scatter plot is the best chart to describe the relation between two, you know, measures. So that is why the table is giving the suggestions based off out of that. Mm, now, let's see if I select any dimension here. Maybe it's a product or let's say product category. I can, you know, use more options now. More, more, you know, charts or icons are enabled. it gives me bubble chart maybe our you know box plot we have rings here circle side by side side by side bars stack bars pie and this color uh, heat map so these are the options which are enabled as soon as i can see or or i have selected these fields here now i will not go by this now uh what i would suggest or maybe you can try playing with you know dragging these fields wherever you want in this area not in this area basically rows and columns area so let's say if i take categories in my columns or better would be the rows because i want to see those categories in rows so whether it is furniture office supplies and technology i can see them in rows field now again state let's say if i want to see profit i'll just drag it into oh sorry i'll just drag into this abc area so putting this any measure on this abc area either you can put it directly here or you can put it on this text card or text icon so let's say if it is sales i'll just drag it here that's a one way or you can drag it directly on this both are on the same side i mean same thing Mm, let's say I want to see the bifurcation. That what all comes into furniture category, what all comes into office supplies, what all comes into technology. Maybe I can go for the another level of my category that is subcategory. I'll just drag that here. Now you can see that furniture, my subcategories, and then I can see my sales number. But right now you you might notice that I don't see a header here. Uh, how do I know it is sales? because as a user perspective or as an end user i will not be getting these marks or filters or pages uh when once it is deployed so for that either i will have to add a header here or uh i mean somehow i need to show that it is a sales so yeah that's one option which i said just add a header here and for adding in headers you just need to drag measures name by default it shows no measure value you can edit this alias any time and make it let's say total sales that's a one way of doing it but normally i don't you know let's see if uh, right now i'm showing only one field but let's say i need not to show one field i have in you know, a couple of fields right now it is sales with sales i need profit also so what i would do i'll just drag both the fields here 
like this like this you might ask a question i'm dragging this field and it's creating a chart whereas if i let's say if i drag this row id it's getting added here though both are numerical field when i drag row id it's being added as a column in a row when i'm dragging this sales or profit or both it's creating a graphical view it's giving me bars charts you can see the colors and the answer i have already given before the break anything or any numerical field which is in blue color that is discrete we cannot add them and that's the reason they are you know added as a column or in a different rows here but these fields some where we have applied an aggregation on sales and profit these are the continuous fields and by default as soon as we add them it gives some visualization but yes let's say we need to convert this into uh, the representation what we were looking for and in two different columns i can go to show me and just click on this cross tab option the first option and it will convert my data or the bars into numbers and here you can see the profit and sales as a header it is already given fine so that is what tableau automatically does i mean here i need not to drag this measure name it automatically pulls if i use this cross tab option and this time in text option it simply shows measure values and your measures are here there is one more thing to it uh let's say if i remove measure values i don't have any measure here now it shows no measure values i'll remove this also now let's say if i drag measure values or let's say measure okay let's say measure values to text it is showing everything and on overlap phase i mean at the same number you can see your against book cases your profit and sales both are shown i'll go to edit filter you can see only these two are selected by default because we did it earlier so tableau is automatically doing it but you can you know select other fields also and it will take all the values in consideration but still there is the same problem that everything is showing into one column only i'm not getting those headers it's same reason because we didn't had this measure names here as soon as we drag it here you will get each value in different column so these are the small things i would say once you drag and drop fields here they'll come across and you'll be playing with it um i have a question this is carolyn yes please um why are you dragging it to a text you drag you drag the um the number to a text it doesn't why wouldn't you put it under detail i guess i'm i'm confused because you're putting a number in a text in a text box okay so this is basically i mean uh the name is given to text because this is simply a label what we you know get in here in details whatever we put uh that will not appear here in the visualization let's see if i let's say i'm dragging maybe the product name right it's by forgetting that okay normally what happens this text what i you know refer to is nothing but the label what i am trying to you know show it here but whatever you drag in details you have option whether you want to show that here or you don't uh, sometimes let's say for tool tip uh, let's say i am using you know other options here i'll be you know you know going through that shapes 
sometimes I need to use a condition, and uh, in that scenario, I really don't want to show anything here, but yes, I want to use that in any calculation, maybe for color, maybe for uh, tool tape, maybe for you know some custom calculation, or maybe for you know filtering purpose in the dashboard. Then we put most of the things on details. Uh, this text, uh, we just you know they have, they have you know named it as a text, but this is the ribbon what you get in the data area. This is not these text category or subcategory. This is simply our data area, what we can see. Uh, you can directly you know, change it maybe in details. Right? So you can see that I have just changed it to details. The same icon is appearing here, but I can't see anything. It is shows simply ABC, ABC, and nothing is there. I can change it to maybe colors. There is no numbers, but depending on the, you know, Aggregation, it colors all the fields. Similarly, I can even change it to size. So that will appear here, but again, yeah, I mean, it uh, depends what is required. Uh, this is text which you, icon is referring to, but it's simply label what we need, need to use here. That's, that's the thing. Now, one more, you know, challenge or I would say scenario uh, we get most of the time. So let's see if I have, I just need category and maybe before, the category. I have a question before you go to the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when, when do you use uh, detail then? Okay. So as I mentioned, detail, uh, wherever I have, you know, implemented so far, I have, let's say, there are two sheets, and I want to see, uh, I want to get a common field, right? Uh, for example, um, I don't want to show that field in the cross table. However, I want that field so that I can join two sheets into one. It will come in pictures when I'll be using dashboard, because in dashboard, will combine two sheets and filter out between them using actions. And at that time, I utilize details. Okay. So what yes. you're saying is, in a sense, detail doesn't show up, it just adds it to your measured values down there, so you use it someplace else? Uh, I'm not saying that is the only use, but I mostly use details for that. Okay. Uh, another thing, let's say if you want to show the details on mouse hovering, like let's say if my mouse is there, I can see three information, category, subcategory, and profit. If you want to increase these numbers, you need to put those fields on tooltip. Okay. So right now you can see that there are only three things here. And if you want to include more, you won't find data fields, though you have full name, username, and other, I would say, uh, tableau environment variables. But all the fields you have, only these right now, category, measure name, measure values, and subcategory. If you want, you can include all fields. And uh, by, you know, mouse server, you will get most of the fields. Okay, right now, only three fields I'm using in this view. It shows only those. Twice. So that's the uh, thing. Uh, but here, I can show one more thing. Let's say I have dragged anything on colors. Mm, let's see. I have used category, subcategory. Let me put discount on colors. I've done that. Now, if I go to tooltip, I can add discount, which earlier I was not getting. So in order to use anything in this data environment, that has to be part of any of these options, either color, size, label, text, tooltip, or detail. Then only we can you know, interchange or uh, utilize them either in one or two or in other cards. 
it has to be there in the sheet in sheet area, not in the data area. I mean, data area is the primary thing that is required, but it has to be there in the sheet area to be used. So I'll just remove that discount. Uh, any question on this before I go to the next sheet? Um, yeah, one question, Sati. <clears throat> How do we get um, currency to show? Like if we wanted to show the profit and sales with the dollar signs and maybe, you know, is there a way to format just those two columns or do we have to format the data before it comes into Tableau? No. So Tableau gives you that functionality here only. Uh, let's say for discount, I want to show that in percentage. You can see here it's 3, 10, 4, 50. Uh, discount, I definitely want to show in percentage. I'll right click on it, go to format. It's by default number. I can change it into percentage, maybe one decimal sign, but. Right. Okay. That's what I was interested <laughs> in. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Right, but yeah, it's not showing me the correct number. Okay, now it's correct, I think. It was in percentage. So it was not, uh, it's actually in percentage, but yeah, these are the decimal numbers. So that's one. Uh, now a question can come that these are the percentage actually. However, right now it, they appear as a decimal number. How can we add percentage sign here? So for that, we will have to use calculated fields. So that, that, that is a thing. But in case of profit and sales, it is my dollar amount. Let me go ahead and do that. Profit, I'll go to format. I'll use currency and it's converted. Same I can do for sales. And here we go. Very nice. Yep. Anything negative is with the brackets, braces here. And for decimal signs in discount, I can go back and change maybe custom, and then I'll change to decimal place one. And we can change it accordingly. All right. Should we go ahead for the next sheet which I was planning to? Sure. All right, thank you. So now the another scenario which I was referring to, let's say uh, sometime it is required, sometimes we get a situation wherein uh, uh, I have one field and uh, let's say category right now. I need another field called subcategory, but I really don't want to show any number here. It is just the relation or the hierarchy which I wanted to show. Uh, there is no use of this ABC. How can we hide it? Any idea, any clues? Would you repeat the question? I'm sorry. So I want to hide this ABC column because in this uh, view, I only want to show a relation between furniture and subcategory or maybe what all comes into furniture. I want to show just that mapping. I don't need this ABC column. Mm -hmm. Because if I, if I show it to maybe in the presentation mode, I have these two fields, that is fine, but there is no use of it. Can you format it and make the column not visible? So uh, basically uh, making unvisible we try using formatting. I never did uh, using the formatting. 
for a particular column because uh, this formatting works either for the complete sheet, for the rows, or for the complete column. We, uh, if, when it, yeah, whenever we will have to, you know, format a particular column, uh, particular column I'm talking about, we will have to use a calculated field. And that is for only this color, or maybe for size, or maybe, you know, the flagging out something. Uh, actually, Tableau doesn't give any direct option to hire this. We need to maybe play a little, little trick here. Because we wanted to show only subcategories and I don't want to show this column here. So I'll be dragging the same field as this on this area, subcategory. Let me drag it on text so that it will appear here without headers, number one. We can see that there are both the things. And without header, I can see subcategory. Now, adding header, we covered for sheet one that I can add header in my field by adding measure names into columns area. I'll just name it as it is, maybe subcategory. And the next thing which I will do, I can right click on the actual subcategory and I'll say uncheck this show header column. And that field will disappear from the <coughs> visualization. Now you have only two fields, one is category and subcategory. And you can see the mapping which was required. Any, any question here? Yeah, if you can uh, uh, repeat that again. I, I tried to follow you, but I, I think I'm a little bit. Okay, so this was the, this was the actual condition. Uh, I have dragged the same column subcategory into this ABC area. So I'm going to drag subcategory into labels or text. You can see the same fields. Now, in order to put a header here, if I don't put headers here and directly I show, uh, let's say uncheck this, it's gonna do the same thing. I mean, ABC area is, area is not there, but I don't have header here. So in order to add headers, I need to drag this measure name into column, and then I can you know rename it as I want. That is what we can do. And any time I can hide this sheet too. So right now if you want, I can name it accordingly, whatever name I have you know, kept here. Or if I want, I can hide the title. More formatting can be done by format option, colors, whatever view, I mean, that doesn't look good. <laughs> I can directly go by which, whichever color you want. We can, you know, do that type of formatting. So we'll be, you know, I'll get into this formatting thing uh, as we go, go forward. But yes, putting a cross tab like this, or maybe this is a cross tab. Or sometimes we call it pivot in Excel. So that's here. Now, normally what I do, so let's say I have sales and profit. I'll remove maybe, uh, let, let me remove discount and quantity out of here. I know that which category or which, is, uh, yes, which category and subcategory is doing good. But normally if I look at the text, it's not that appealing. Uh, maybe if I want to see the, uh, by the profit itself, let's say, I want to see that which subcategories are doing best or better uh, with other subcategories, I'll drag the same profit field into my colors area. And now you can see, this is the scale which is by default created by W. It is showing the minimum value of negative 1802 
and maximum value of 8611 and based out of that it has colored my cross table maybe i want to change it more because again as a user perspective uh, yeah i know the colors are different but it's not giving me a better look so maybe i can go ahead and select any other table no not that so table option so one thing i would try at my end that i will try to change this scale first of all mm, you can see tableau gives you a lot of color scales uh the automatic one and then you have you know these many options so i can uh, we can select any any of these uh out of that if you click on a particular color because it is starting from this uh it seems gray or brown i would guess brown and then it's a blue here so if i if you want you can change i'll say negative would be red and then i'll go green for my positive values if i change it still i can't see much impact on this table uh maybe i want to see only two colors out of it so by default it was you know a complete a rainbow between red and green i would say set the color and i'll see only two colors let's say if it is required i'll say apply and you have you know more options also where you want the starting point end point what is the center of your data you can do that right now i just i have just selected step the color and then i'll click okay so now you can see based on profit only profit it has colored my profit and sales both the columns so in case of profit i know that if it is negative it is red and if it is positive it is green but in case of sales it may not be true but if i say keeping profit in mind what is green and you know red then my you know, calculation would be right or maybe uh, whatever statement i am making that would be right but again uh, here you can you know say that there is one limitation i don't want this color uh, because it was just the profit scale i want it on only profit i don't want it on sales any idea how we can do that how can we just color only one column not the other or maybe i can use different color scale for different columns any clue one column colored would you just then use the measure values I'm sorry I see you have profit in there never mind right yeah, yeah. but only profit some profits shows on with the color bar so why is sales on the color yeah I'm when, confused by that too couldn't you right click on that column and maybe um change that to a different scale if you so, click on those sales you mean here uh, on this yeah. okay so uh, normally uh, a tableau doesn't give this flexibility uh, this would i would say it's a limitation so you remember i was referring to tableau community a lot of people have placed this question and this need to be corrected in tableau but with the existing format what we have whether it is tableau 8 9 10 whatever version we are using we can implement it because it's a very common requirement i don't want the same color or maybe the same scale to be applied on all of my measures so for that we have a turn around and uh, there is a trick what we do uh, basically we add our measures using one calculated field or in a chart area 
what I say uh, when I say chart area, uh, let's say if I just create or maybe I can just drag this field number of records into column and I'll make it attribute, you will find all the bars with one same size, same width I would say. I need to do the same thing again. Attribute. And for these fields, what I would do, I'll make them transparent. So you can see that I have just selected one fill here and went ahead and made the transparency zero. Same thing for this. I'll go to colors and make it zero. Now I don't see those bars until unless I put my mouse over this. Uh, now what I would do, I'll just select one field and I'll, I'll drag my profit or sales, whichever I want, on the label. Right? And same thing I would do for the color also. So I'll just drag profit for this on the color side. And this time, you can see the colors uh, based on one, you know, the profit only in one column. Will you know, play more with the formatting? It is not 100% correct, right, correct right now. Will be playing with the formatting, but I'll do the same thing with the sales. I'm going to drag sales on my label. I'll drag sales for my colors. And now the time comes when it, when I need to play with the, you know, the formatting or maybe the other things which you get here. So first of all, I'll maybe remove this show header thing or let me make access as I'd say no, number one. And here in fig, I would say one. And now you can see as soon as I have done it one, I can see the full bars in these rows. I'll say apply. Same thing I would do for sales. Right click, edit access. Tick mark, I would say no. And say I'll go by one, and I'll say this. So one thing I have completed, just a little bit I need to play with the size. Same with the another column. Now the only one thing is left that I need to make them middle alignment or central alignment. For that, I can go to formatting and maybe alignment central. Same for this column. Alignment central. Now, here might be a silly, silly question, but what if you really want to flip that round like the original is going to, and you want the, the characters themselves to reflect the values versus the boxes that they're in where it make it a little easier to read? Can you flip that back around so that the boxes are transparent, but the, the, the color of the text actually reflects the color of the like 114 would be green, 1207 would be green, and 7445 would be light blue. Can you accomplish that? Just, I mean, just hypothetically. So uh, you mean uh, you want color of the font to be changed, not the box? Correct. 
because that'd be a lot easier to read on a printout and report someplace to where when you have the boxes colored, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's distracting. If you mm -hmm. wanted to just sit there and just really have the negative red sh pop out right at you at uh, 1802 and the mm -hmm. 9983 is uh, being blue. Yep, that is also doable. So for, for that simply, I mean, what I normally do, we create a dual chart. So let me, this is basically, right now you can see the exit was here. It's a nothing but a chart area. What I would do, yeah. Oh, so what, you, okay, two charts then, okay. Yes, so what I would do here, uh, first of all, uh, I'll go back and make it zero as it was earlier because I'm making the change in the same table. Okay. So, right. Now, now the next thing, what I would do, I'll just drag my colors, okay. I'm dragging one more field and make it same so that I can make, you know, dual access chart here. Same options, I'm going to, you know, check for none. And then fix, I'll make it one. And then maybe I can make it central as it was already. And in this case, let me just drag that profit because the first column was profit in here. Don't you have to draw uh, measure names up there so they have the names or? Yeah, that we can add because uh, in dual access it gives me the uh, flexibility to add any name what I want. Okay. I'm just looking for text to be, you know, put. Okay, being it a dual access chart, we just need to play with the axis that how, you know, where it is starting and where it is ending from. Here we go. So I have got the text with the different colors, and this is for the profit I have done. The same thing can be you know repeated for sales. And uh, when it comes to you know naming these, uh, I'll just remove it. And in here, 
I can give it a name of profit. Now, I apologize if I missed it. If I looked up there through columns, I got attribute number of records there three times. Mm -hmm. um, where, where, how did that get there from there, or just sort of? Okay, so we have, you know, right now, uh, the very first thing uh, to be, you know, noted here that for one column, I need basically two attribute columns here because it's a dual chart. So what is happening, uh, the, the next attribute column, what I'm going to add for maybe for sales, I need to drag all my fields on that. Right now only one column here, and I have two attribute columns for profit. Let's say I need to add another one, the sales one. You will find like as many columns you will add in columns area, you will find all those in here. Under marks, okay. Exactly, yes. So uh, the cases wherein let's say I have, you know, compared two things, let's say profit and, uh, sorry, target versus actual, we really need to, you know, understand this because this, this scenario comes. Because normally what happens, we show our actual numbers here and we create a flag which is nothing but a target. So based on our target, we color our actual numbers, whether it is achieved or not. So that is why, you know, I thought of showing this very first. Okay. In this exercise. I know it's very confusing, uh, but yes, it is useful in certain scenarios. If everybody's okay with it, I can go forward, or if you want, I can create this again. Anybody, any question on it? All right, I think we can move ahead. So next thing was, uh, let's say, uh, I'll just play with the same columns, category subcategory and product name. So I'll just drag one by one, maybe first of all category. Then I'm going to drag subcategory here. Uh, I'll use profit and sales. Convert them into cross table. But now what I want, I want to see the data for any specific maybe state or city or maybe region. How can I do that? I'll have to add that field by which I want to, I mean for which I want to see this data, I'll have to add that field into this filters card. And how I'm going to do it, I need to drag that field, let's say by region, uh, for region if I want, I'll just put that field in, into the filter card. It will pop up this window, and I believe it, it's looking very familiar to what we saw while creating data source. So it shows all the values for region, then have tab for wildcard, condition, the top, if we want to apply. Right now what I would do, I'll just select the use all, and click apply. Nothing happens, I just saw another fill here. I'll right click on it and say show filter. Now you can see that we have got another, maybe a card here appeared, which has in you know, all those four values out of region filter, sorry, column, and then you have all check marks. So all these values are selected here by default. 
And now you got an option that let's say if you want, if you want to see the data only for the best region. Uncheck everything. Data has been filtered out. And the best part of it that I have only one negative category for best that is machine. And rest all the profit are in positive. If you want, you can see the south, data for south. If you want, you can see the east. If you want a combination, you can do that. Combination of three regions. So you can select that particular values and you can make your view change. More, more on it, uh, these options. So let's see if I go to edit filters. This is nothing but the same window again, which we have, you know, I think we are looking at the third time now. So if I select all, it's gonna, you know, select all. Now, uh, a question can, you know, come in. What if I click on select all here, or what if I use use all option? What is the difference between these two? Use all and select from list and then all. They're the same? Mm, I mean, by the time there is no updation in the values, I mean, let's say in future there is no change going to happen in these values, they are 100% same. But let's say in future this list is going to change in my data source. Then using the select all from list is not a recommended thing because this list will not automatically update. If you want this list to be updated automatically out of your data source, we need to use use all option. Or in other words, I would say, this is just a customized list which is automatically being created based on values in our column right now. So if we got, if we got a, uh, uh, a, let's say, a northeast region, by selecting from list, that list will not expand when we get new data in, we have to select all, or we want to be able to select we got new data in that had a gave us another region, would that automatically pop in there next time we refresh the data? Right. So let's say if any changes is happening in your data source and you have selected select from list, it will not automatically pop up for an so, end user. So the list the, the list will not change. If I go down to hit a drop down, that new let's say northeast region wouldn't show up then? No, it will not. So that, how do you do a drop-down list that expands? So oh, by, is, just by doing all then, okay. Exactly. Okay. This, this use all works whenever, I mean, whenever there is a change in your data source, it will automatically, automatically pick up all the values and show in the visualization for the end user. Okay. What if you want all of them, but you want to exclude some? So let's say if you want to, you know, exclude so on the right, anything. you could do that now, right? Or you'd create custom condition. So yeah, con creating a condition is also an option. Uh, apart from that, use all is always there, but like if we use all, this our exclude option will not be there. Uh, having this list, I can, you know, maybe select a particular value to exclude. But in that case, uh, the other scenario which we discussed, like let's say in future our list is going to change, these values will keep, you know, appearing here. But, they would, will not it would, mm -hmm. but would central always be excluded then, even if this list changes? Yes. Okay. And for the same thing, I mean, let's say for a particular value you never want to show any data, apply this filter on data source level, what we discussed initially. I mean, we can, you know, directly go to this data source. We can edit data source, or maybe you can go to this option, edit data source filters. Maybe region, here we go. And the same. 
Would that attempt. mean your extract also won't have that um, data? Exactly. If we are filtering out anything on data source level, neither the extract nor my visualization will have that field or that value. Okay. Coming to more options on uh, filters, so edit thing what we we have already seen uh, regarding top. I'll be you know discussing more on like how we can apply these values or I mean for uh, let's say for just a quick because we have this thing already in build. So for sales thing, let's say if I want only top ten uh, things here to be shown, sales by some, I can click and it shows that this filter is limited to top 10 by sales. So that is what, you know, you can see it's our cascading filter that first of all this top 10 will apply and then only I can apply these three So if we change that to the top two, then only two of them would show up? So it basically, okay, let me just try that. So now what, what happens, uh, this top two filters, okay, let me go to again. Okay, it shows data basically, it's a little confusing, top two by some sales. Would we have to change that from all back to maybe select it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so there are you know, several ways we can apply it. Uh, but let me just see that one. It's the technology data, but I can see all of them here. Okay. Give me some time. I'll, you know, uh, just explore this how this top is working all over the filter. But I'll be covering this top option uh, today only with other uh, filter options with okay. the shorting filter. How both are working with the combination? That's I'm a little confused on. So that's that's I will, you know, cover. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say maybe you remove. Um go back to general and remove the list, don't do it and go custom, never mind, I apologize, I don't know. I... So in custom here you can add your own fields, uh, values. For example, let's say I want to add east, I can add that. Or if I want to add west, I can add that. So this is for that purpose. Uh, again, the same thing, it will not refresh if the values change in the data source. <laughs> The recommended thing is this only, use all. But yeah, uh, just these both things, are con applying conditions and top wildcards. Wildcard is again the same thing. I've, uh, I don't want to show all the values. If everything is filtered by East region right now. If I want to show only best, I can do that. It works on the wildcard. Uh, it just use on the contains logic. Could we um, verify that by sliding region up to column scene? No, never mind. I was going to sit there and say, because I was going to say so, if we slide region up there, we can see that visibly. Okay. If we slid region in front of category and the, and the rows. Okay, that would work. Okay, uh, now I need to add that filter again because as we have dragged this region here, 
the filter went away. Uh, okay, how you can you know stop it happening? Wildcard, let's say apply and I will show filter. Okay, now you can see it's showing only this, but if I change this value, let's say east, it's so, gonna. So, mm -hmm. so will this, what, what happens if you change region, show top two now? Edit filter, change it just top two. That's a good option. Let me just try that. Now, maybe it show only worksheet three contains error. The following be removed. Okay. Right. We are good so far. Now we can go to edit filters. I'm going to select top two. And in here I have use all. It says worksheet three contains error. The following will be removed. The filter on region is invalid. So it's creating some problem uh, because whenever we add region and use, uh, okay, this time I'm uh, keeping this as select from list and I'm going back to this field. Let's say top two, the same error. Okay, I'll, I'll check with this, you know, top thing and I will discuss that how this top is working in the filter area. I just okay. wonder if you put reach in there in rows as far as the first column, if that might help, but just sort of thought, but if you put it there in rows as the first, you know, brought reach and over to the left of the category there and maybe try it that way. Uh, okay. Basically, whenever we apply these filters, so they work on, okay. Now it is, again, I think showing two regions, east and west only, and we have used region as a row level, okay. So it is filtering for two regions. It's showing me that top. Okay, if I show it just seems like to me if you're doing a select list and a top two, they counteract each other. If you turn one off, then the other one would work as what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yep, but there is another clause to it. Uh, I mean, if you notice. Uh, if I select all the values, it's gonna show me still. It's gonna show me only two uh, regions, that is east okay. and west. If I, you know, remove maybe east and west, then it's showing me central and south. Okay. Uh, if let's say there are three things selected, it will keep me showing okay east and south. So whatever values I select here out of this filter, it's gonna show me top two out of them. Okay. So it is working then now. And another thing which, you know, uh, I'm able to understand is uh, this top two thing is working on the same values what we have in this filter that, uh, criteria. So earlier what we were doing, like this region field was not here, and that's why it was, you know, we need to understand that what it is doing, because if I select or uncheck anything on this region area, it was showing top two only, but we were not able to recognize that which values it is showing or not showing. So it is doing out of the region field only. By the time region is not there in this cross tab, it was tough for us to, you know, figure it out. 
All right. Great. So I'll just move on to other option. Uh, this edit filter we have, you know, saw that. Remove filter, it's simply removing it. Uh, this is another an important option uh, on the filter side. So basically you can see various options like using all related data sources, all using this data source, selected worksheet, and only this worksheet. So this comes in picture, like if I say only this worksheet, so this filter is going to work on only this particular cross tab and, and this sheet three. But if I select, let's say, selected worksheets option, it gives me an option which all workbooks, I, sorry, worksheets I want to apply this filter for. Whether it is cross tab, mapping, so it is up to us whether we want to select that or not. But sheet three is by default selected. It is grayed out, I cannot uncheck it. So that option is there. Uh, now what can happen, I have selected mapping uh, this sheet, but not the cross tab. So whatever filter I'll make selection or you know deselect anything here, the same thing will be applied on this tab also. It doesn't have number, but yes. The same filter will apply on it. And you can see that region filter, we earlier we didn't add anything here, but it's by default added as we selected that option, select worksheets. You will not find this option in cross tab, the first sheet. It's there in filters area of the second tab and the third tab because we have already added. The third option could be that all using this data source. So right now I'm connecting to two different data sources, orders and ops. So if I select this option, all using this data source, so all the worksheets which are utilizing this data source will have this filter in impact. So you can see in cross tab one, two, and three, we have this filter applied. But let's see if I maybe select my different data source and create one more sheet. You can't see that filter option here because it's a different data source altogether. So that's how we know we can change where it will be applicable or not. And if I say using all related data sources, so I'm assuming that it should work on the third tab also. If I have any field related to this, so let's say now let me drag anything from orders. No, they are not related so far. Okay, so this option works only when my both data sources are, you know, blend together properly and there are common fields. Right now we don't have any common fields and that's why it is not applied. But yes, it will work only in that case if my both the data sources are blended properly. And in that case, uh, the another condition would be that this field has to be in both the data sources then only this filter will be applied or applicable. Uh, now you may ask a question that where do we use all these things, uh, maybe these options. So right now we have a different, different sheet, so that's why it doesn't make sense that why we are talking about these various options. But by the time when we'll be you know, dragging all these sheets into one dashboard, then we'll be you know, talking about these filters and how to, you know, just filtering only one of them, we will be able to apply the same functionality on multiple sheets. Now, then real quick, just a quick question, because you did filters both on database on sheet. When you look at a filter on, that, on the right-hand side, how do you know if it's against a database or a sheet? If that filter, what's that filtering against the data? Oh, because it says data source when you yes. edit the filter. Uh, otherwise, it's against the worksheet. Okay, got it. So it automatically saves all these things. Mm, all right. Then fourth 
option on the filter is the format filter, so it is simply just the cosmetic colors, font alignment and all. For this filter card, we can you know apply that. Uh, this is again an important, I would say, area, customize your filter. So let's see if I don't want to show all option here. I can directly go ahead and uncheck that and it would not appear. These are the other options, whether you want to, you know, show search button, include, exclude, filter type, fewer or more buttons. The last one is again important, the show apply button. So, so far what it was doing, whatever value I used to select, it directly used to reflect here. But as I have applied, uh, you know, clicked on that apply button, so by the time I will not click on this apply option, that filter will not reflect or the data would, would not change here. So that is again, I mean, we can uh, sometimes, because not, what happens on the server side, uh, users are you know, making filter selections and as soon as they make change in any filter, Tableau starts loading. So in order to avoid that, we can give this option to apply. And by the time they will not you know, make or uh, select all the values and click on apply, the changes and the loading will not start. So that is the better use, but uh, uh, very rarely we apply or implement this. Show title is again for this region field, region name, what you can see here, I have just unchecked the region name has gone. I can't see that region title. I can change that. Now this area is again, uh, I would say, Important, let me okay. Now it looks better. I just removed the top two. So, right now I can see it is multi selection. I can select multiple options at a time. If you want to show, let's say, single value list, it's a radio button, and at a time you can just select one value. With that, you can give a drop down. Maybe I want to select one. Single value sliders. At a time, it will select only one value. And you can change. So these are different just look and feel of the filters. Multiple values. Multi-value drop down. And wild card match or custom list. This is again the same thing. You can just specify a keyword here. Maybe East or West, it will apply. This is another, I would say, important thing for relevant values. So for that, let me just drag one more filter and we'll just see how it is working. Uh, let me just drag one more filter off, maybe, let's say state. I'll drag it here. All, apply, and show. I'll keep it at upper side. And for state, what I'm going to do is I'll just select that option, only relevant values. So what basically I'm doing is I'm making a relation between my region uh, filter and state filter. So which value, I mean, whatever value I'm going to select in region, only those states will appear in the another filter area. If I select east, the list will change. If I select south, my list will update automatically. Uh, had it been selected only all values in data source, it will keep showing all the values. There is no change, right? It, it is showing me the full values, whatever is coming in the data source. So it's better to check only relevant values in sub filters, not in the master, I would say master filters, so that I can you know, change or populate only the required values, which are dependent on the selected value. All right. Any question here so far on filters? Um, 
Just a quick question, uh, Sati. This um, filter, you said, can be applied at the extract level or at the data source level, both places, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, uh, she, I mean, in order to add uh, in the same context, Number one, the first level was the data source when we were supposed to apply filters. I mean, uh, uh, the option was there. Then if we apply filter on data source, it is automatically applied to the extract. Correct, because the data source basically overrides what you have at the extract level. Right. Then we can apply filters on my sheet. That is what I'm doing right now. This is on the one sheet. One filter I have used in this sheet can be applied to other sheets also using the same data source. And sheets which are using the different data source, but there is a, some relation using blending, we can apply the same filter on those sheets also. And I think uh, like how we are going to use it with the blending, what I will do, I'll just keep a better data. First of all, wherein I can show the relation between two sheets and data will have the common fields. And then I'll you know, show this option that how we can use these filters with the related data source. So far, these three options we have you know done in here. Only with this worksheet, selected worksheets, and all using this data source. All right, uh, I'll just talk about sorting. So, take another 10 minutes. So on sorting thing, uh, okay, let me create one more sheet here, first of all. And I'll drag, uh, let's say, subcategory. And I'll take one measure, let's say, profit. So in here, I have just dragged my data by default. So you can see that now, right now, the order is not, they, they are randomly sorted. You can see the text is, by, I mean, it is sorted, but my, but not by the profit. Let's see if I want to sort my data by profit. So W, if you have, you know, single measure and dimension, you can utilize these options. Supply is zero, seven, okay. Uh, similarly, you can convert them into descending or ascending orders, whichever you want. That you can do. But the problem comes, these are the simple uh, sorting options which is available and I think everybody can play with it. Now what the problem comes, whenever we have, you know, the multiple fields. Multiple fields, what I mean, let's say I already had category, I'm going to drag my subcategory. Now you you can see if let's say if I sorted uh, descending, you can see for furniture category it is sorted, then for office supplies it is again sorted, and for technology it is again sorted. So it is doing the sorting thing on different levels, and maybe sometimes it it can I um, mean a question can come. Let's say I want to see only top five category, right? So if I ask top five categories to be shown here, so my first of all, uh, my, you know, uh, the, I will think about that, the sort the data and put only five categories here, not, uh, don't show all. So let's see if I'm going to do that. So, uh, we'll see that whether it is working or not. So by profit, I want to filter them out. So, and I want to filter out on subcategories by top five only. So, let's say subcategory. I'll go to the same top option, which, you know, we have been, you know, doing little research on. I'll go to this by field, and I'll see only five, profit and sum, apply. This is a one view. And let me take copy of it. 
duplicate sheet. And in here, I'll just remove that filter of top. And maybe I can drag five and six into one dashboard so that we can compare data that what exactly it is showing. So for top five, you can see here, so, uh, the order has been completely disturbed. This is the completely disturbed order. But yes, I know that it is my top five category. And this is when I was getting all of my you know, data. So if I sort it, um, it is very difficult because I'm not sure whether I'm getting the right number. This is the order when I have sorted my data. We have categories, subcategories, and I'm getting them in, We can see that um, basically what I want to say here that if you have you know, multiple levels or multiple dimensions, the sorting maybe uh, doesn't work properly. Or maybe if you want to type, find out top five or 10, that doesn't work properly. In those cases, we don't use this sorting options directly. We use uh, some calculated fields or functions which are available in Tableau, that is, maybe index you can use or maybe you can use rank. Uh, so I'll be you know, talking more about on the you know uh, rank and index in the calculated field section. But for simple sorting uh, of one level, these options are the best. You can directly go ahead and sort your data. But if you have multi-level sorting, these options are not recommended. That's the crux uh, uh, what I wanted to you know, mention here. Any confusion in it? For multi-level sorting, I'll be you know, covering uh, with the uh, indexes and rank. All right, so that's on the, you know, the sorting side. Uh, another thing, this is small uh, few things here, like changing the view and the cross table, whatever cross table you have. You can directly the switch, uh, you can switch this view. Right now my, you can see the subcategories are here, uh, numbers are here, uh, the field of the profit, if you want to switch the view, you can directly you know play with the options here. So uh, before we you know end today's session, I mean we were supposed to cover all these today, but we are able to you know cover filters and sorts only. Uh, for tomorrow, uh, I would say that before we start uh, for tomorrow's session, I would request all of you to you know just at least play with the environment, maybe sorting or switching the views, data connection which we covered today. Uh, we'll play more with the parameters and calculated fields tomorrow. So uh, that is what in the kitty for uh, for tomorrow. So uh, do we have any questions so far before we end today's session? Everybody is okay? Yep. Yeah, I think once we start using the tool, maybe we'll have more questions, you know, like uh, playing around with different features of it. Maybe we'll have the questions tomorrow or the day after. All right. So uh, um, uh, I would say everybody has got this uh, sample paper, right? So, Please try and play with this data. I'm pretty sure that by connecting to data in Tableau, we'll come across many problems. So tomorrow before, you know, we'll start going to the further topic, uh, we'll, you know, choose any volunteer and we'll be doing some, uh, maybe covering uh, the sorting or filtering thing what we did today. 
All right. Okay. All right, then. So I think that, that's all for today. Uh, please do share your feedback. Uh, uh, if you think like any uh, things need to be up to, uh, like maybe corrected. So I'll you know, keep keep in mind before starting the next session. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sari. Thanks.